So welcome everyone to another session of our Brick by Brick Builders Club. During each of these sessions, we take a deep dive into the technical and creative process of builders, creators, and innovators in Decentraland. So with that, I'm super excited to welcome Isa, who is a 3D animator for Decentraland Foundation. For today's session, she will be diving into the process of creating an emote 2.0 from naming conventions and creating a rig for the prop to properly exporting the emote. So these sessions um, have been, are based on some of the most asked questions Isa has received about emotes 2.0. And the whole creation process, I don't know who here has tried it, I have, but they can be a little confusing for sure and a bit overwhelming, but she wants to make sure everyone, beginner or not, has the right knowledge and tools to create their own animation. So I'm so excited for today's session. And with that, I will pass it to you, Yisa. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. I hope you all enjoy what I have prepared for you today. So uh, we are going to talk about emotes 2.0. And uh, yeah, I think we can get started. So yes. let me know if you can hear me all right and if you can see my screen. Looks great. So emotes 2.0 are emotes uh, with props and or sounds. And how does it work? Emotes 2.0 must have two armatures, two animation clips, props, which would be one or more objects. Props need to have skeletal animation. Uh, this type of emote needs a proper naming convention and the file should be 3 mega max size. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Is, uh, I've, I'm going to start with some questions that people always ask me about emotes. So uh, let's get started. Why two armatures? Uh, usually people ask me, do I need to use an armature? Why do I have to use two armatures? Okay, so this is why. Uh, we need one armature for the avatar, which is the one that we already have in the file. Like when you animate the avatar, you are manipulating the avatar's armature. But we need another armature for the prop. First, why we need another one? We can't edit the avatar skeleton in any way. We can't add or remove bones. So one way, uh, if we could, uh, we would just simply go into edit mode, add some extra bones for the prop, setup and all that, and you're ready to go. But since we can't add or remove bones from the avatar uh, skeleton, we need to use uh, another because uh, since props need a skeletal animation, this type of animation is driven by a rig. There are two types of animation. One is skeletal animation and the other, I call it object animation, but some people say it's transform animation, which doesn't require a rig and people uh, usually prefer it. But then we go to the next question is why no object animation? First, because like I said previously, we can only have two animation clips or modes. And you can only, since you can only have two clips, I mean, every time, I don't know if you guys have tried uh, this type of animation, object animation, but whenever you manipulate an object around, grab it around, you create an animation clip for that object. Every uh, new object that you add, you're going to create another animation clip for it. So imagine like you have like 20 different objects even like five different objects, you're going to end up with five different animation clips and we can't have that. So uh, since we can only have two, there, we, we, we have to find a way to have uh, many objects moving in a single animation clip. And we do that uh, with a skeletal, through a skeletal animation or through a rig. But some people might ask, oh, but I, I usually do that for my scenes in the central end. It's usually easier, it's faster. Oh, why do I need to add a rig since, I mean, it's only one object. One object would still have only one animation clip. So why that? And I'll tell you that because um, more complex props need a rig to move and deform properly. And that can be achieved in object animation. For example, imagine that you want to animate a snake. You can't deform a snake uh, in object mode because you can't deform uh, the object unless you're using blend shapes, but that is not even supported for mode, so whatever. 
So a way to deform the snake would be like adding bones, uh, binding the mesh to the rig, which is called skinning. It's the skinning process. And then you can manipulate the, the rig through there. So uh, even if it's just a single object, let's say it's just a ball, it, it's not a snake, it, it won't be deforming and it doesn't need, it only needs one bone. Anyways, we need to keep it consistent. Like we can't have some people doing object animation while other people are going to use a rig. So we have to be consistent. So in this case, we decided to have a rig for any kind of prop, if it's just one object, or if, we, if it's multiple objects, if this object is going to deform a lot, or if it's not going to deform uh, anything, we have to use a rig to control this animation. Next question is, is naming convention important? Yes, and yes. It's really important. Some people might get confused because there is naming convention for uh, armatures and naming convention for animation clips, but I'm going to explain why. Because uh, I don't know if you can see here in my screen, there is an image showing armature, which is the armature for the avatar. And armature prop is a proper name convention for uh, the prop armature. So uh, it's a way that the system will be able to differentiate between the two. And when you add the animation clip, it will know which animation is related to each armature. Because sometimes when you export the animation from, from Blender, I mean, any, any armature can play any animation. Of course, it's not going to be affected because it doesn't have the proper uh, rotation or scale or movement or whatever. But uh, you can't like parent the animation to the armature. It's not like there's a, a, a way to connect this. So whenever this leaves Blender, uh, we have to have a way to identify which armature belongs to the avatar, which armature belongs to the prop, which animation clip belongs to the avatar, and which animation clip belongs to the prop. Since we have two armatures and two animation clips, we have to connect them properly. Yeah. So next, do I need to learn rigging? And the sad answer is yes. I mean, I know rigging can be boring, can be technical. Uh, it's usually not, uh, no one is going to start, oh, I want to start 3D and let's start by rigging. Uh, that's not the case usually. <laughs> At least I can say for myself, I fell in love with animation before. I got into rigging and I really hated it because it can be very complicated. It can be overwhelming. It's easy to break a rig if it's not very well done. But this, the, the not so bad news is that uh, if you want to do it yourself, you have to learn rigging, but you can like just learn the basics and you'll be fine for doing emotes. I mean, rigging is a much more than just adding bones. I mean, it can go to adding bones, constraints, and thinking about a whole setup and adding like drivers and all that. So it can get very complicated, but for emotes, uh, usually it, just the basics will get you through. All right. And in fact, I think every animator should learn about rigging because the rig is the most, I mean, it's the tool that you're going to work all the time. It's the most important tool for an animator. It's the rig and the rig's possibilities. So I think every animator, if you want to start animating or if you want to become a professional animator, I would highly uh, suggest learning about rigging, trying to do your own rigs, because uh, that way you you get familiar with that. You know all the possibilities. If it breaks and you somehow know why it's breaking, why it's not working, uh, how can you... Uh, fix that or a work around for that. And I highly suggest learning rigging if you want to become an animator. But if you get stuck with rigging too, don't worry, you can always reach out to me. I'm happy to help uh, however I can. I mean, I, I know this can be a little bit overwhelming. So uh, I, I'm going to show you how to set up a rig. I'm going to explain how it works. Very, uh, It's the very basics of rigs so you can do it in your own emote because you are going to need 
to know a little bit about rigging if you want to add a prop to your emote. So uh, let's start with prop armature and setting the rig. Um, I have set uh, a list of things that I want to go through in here, but I'm be showing you in Blender how it works. Uh, this is Blender 4.0.2. So um, first, I'm going to show you the setup that I usually prefer for working with animation. I just delete everything in here. I like um, adding another tab in here. I leave the timeline down there and change it for the oh, sheet action editor. I like to use multiple screens for animation. One is front, side. Remember to set the frame rate to 30 uh, FPS. So how do we add like an armature? How do we do it? I mean, if you come here, I have opened the starting file that you can download uh, for the avatar, the later version, I mean. And in here, I mean, the, the frame rate is already 30 FPS. I already left a uh, prop armature in here and you can just go into edit mode and edit it, but I'm going to show you how to add an armature. Very simple. Just press Shift A, armature. Oh, that's it. <laughs> you have an armature. And uh, this is in object mode, of course. It's very important for you to remember that you can never, never, never animate a rig in object mode. A rig is only animated in uh, pose mode. Because otherwise, I mean, you're going to have a hard time. I, I'm going to show you later uh, what I'm talking about. But for example, in here, we have the transforms of the object. Usually when you export it, you want location to be zero, rotation to be zero, and scale to be one. And if you move the object around, uh, and then you add animation in pose mode, I mean, you don't actually know how your animation really looks like, because there's a the object animation would be overriding uh, the pose mode animation. But let's get uh, to the rig in here. So this is an armature. It can be consisted of multiple bones or only one. Usually I like coming here to the data and uh, here in viewport display, and I like to show the axes. The axes are the direction in which the bone is going to move. So I also like to change it here for instead of having it textured like this, I like to have it, where is it? Here. I like to work it with, with wire because you can see through the bone. And uh, another thing that I also like uh, checking in is like this in front button in here, because if you add a mesh, for example, how it is right now, it's just, uh, cylinder you see that you can see the bone anymore and if you select this in front you will always see the bone through the mesh just delete this and go back to the bone um so a bone consists of two parts this is the head of the bone and uh this is the tail every movement let's go to, into pose mode so i can show you every movement from a bone starts from the head so if you rotate it, you see that it's moving from the head. If you scale it, it's scaling up and down based on the head's position. So this is important to keep in mind because when you add a bone, you need to know that the mesh deformation will happen uh, based on where the head of the bone is placed. So uh, this is how it's gonna work. The axes that I've mentioned are X, Y, and Z. If, and if you rotate in X, local X, I mean, let me change it to local here. If you rotate in X, you see that it's rotating uh, in the X axis. Y, the same thing. And Z, the same thing. So uh, this will tell the animator or whatever is working with this rig in which direction the bone is going to rotate and behave. So it's important to keep in mind when you're, 
when you're creating, uh, adding a bone or anything, it's important to, to pay attention to the direction that these axes are pointing. You can change that into edit mode if you select the bone, come into edit mode and change the row in here. You can see that you can change uh, the bone row or the bone orientation. But that will depend, like usually if it's just a single object or and if it's not uh, very posed or anything, like just the, the default row will be enough uh, to have a good movement and to grab just things around. So another thing that uh, you can do with bones, okay, this is just a single bone. I wanna create an armature. How do I do that? There are a few ways to do this. One would be selecting the bone, pressing E to extrude. And you see that you can add a, a new bone this way. Another one, and, you, and there's something to keep in mind, like there's a hierarchy when you're building a rig. So the parent is always this one, the child is the bone uh, that the head is connected to the tail of the parent here. So you can have a connected rig like this. You can just like press shift A and whatever, like let's just uh, press shift A. It's going to add a bone wherever the cursor is. So if we change the cursor to here, for example, and we press shift A, you're going to add a bone where the cursor is, but this bone is not connected in any way to these other ones. So to, to build a nice hierarchy, you have to create this parenthood. If the bones are connected, the hierarchy, as you can see in here, is already uh, working fine. For example, this is bone, this is bone 001, this is bone 002. The two are connected, so you can see this is a child of this one. But let's say I want this bone to be a child of this one. So you press the child, the parent, and press Control P, and keep you can keep offset. So now, if what does that mean? It means that if you move this bone, the child will inherit uh, its movement. So yeah, that's it. Uh, so I think these are the two ways. You do. Oh no, there's a third way too. You can select a bone and press Shift D to duplicate it and grab it around. So this is basically how you're going to set up your hierarchy and your armature. Uh, something important to keep in mind is that the shape of the armature uh, is usually determined by the shape of the mesh. So, for example, if you're rigging a tree. You're, you keep like extruding this here to make the, 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 the trunk, for example. And then let's say you have like a bunch of leaves in here and there. So you can just add a bone, rotate it a little, little bit, grab this bone, rotate it a little bit. Uh, keep in mind that the rig doesn't have to be connected. So for example, you, you just need bones where the mesh is going to deform. So I'm going to uh, I'm here to object mode again, and I'm going to add a mesh. I'm going to add a cylinder in here. And I'm going to add, for example, um, where is it? The uh, UV sphere. So let's say I want to rig this. Let's just grab it in here. One. Oops, not this, it's not scale. It's here. So let's say I want to rig this. So I want to go into the uh, edit mode. We can delete everything in here because we won't be using this. Delete the bones. And um, I want to show you why it's important to place the bone correctly. Let's just go back into here and set the cursor to the world origin. Let's put this as zero. Change the origin of the 3D cursor. Okay, so it's very centered in here. So if we add uh, a rig, add an armature, we have to go in front here again. I change here to wire. 
And I mean, it's already centered in the mesh. So if we come here uh, and do the skinning to bind the mesh actually to the bone, the thing that should, you should do, it's like parenting anything in Blender. Select the child, select the parent, and press Control P. And then there are these many options in here. Uh, for armature deform, there's empty groups and there's automatic weights. Automatic weights Blender will do the weight, the weighting uh, automatically for you. And with empty groups, you have to do it manually. Automatic is great. Like if you have just a single object, it will do it right. But if you have many ob objects together and many bones close to each other, you're going to have to fix uh, these weights manually too. So in this case, let's just go with automatic weights. And I'm going to show you why it's important to place uh, the bone properly. So if we go into pose mode and we try to manipulate this around, you see that now the mesh is following the bone and it's following a uh, base in here. For example, if you rotate, it's rotating from the head of the bone. If you scale, it's going to scale from the head of the bone. But what happens if we change the position of this bone? We go here, let's go into uh, uh, here. Let's put the cursor to select it, and it's going to go straight to the center of the object. And now if I go into object mode and select this, and selection to cursor, and then position the bone right here. You see that now it's going to move the mesh differently. So now it's rotating from the center of the mesh instead of the base, like it was before, and scaling from the middle. So this is why it's important to uh, choose where you're going to place the bone, because otherwise, I mean, you're, you won't get the deformation that you want. You'll have a lot of uh, problems getting the movement right, and sometimes it's just a matter of uh, bones misplaced. So in this case, I think I just prefer it down there. So cursor origin. Let's go here. Selection to cursor, and that's it. Something to keep in mind too uh, is, for example, you forgot and you animated your object in object mode, like I told you not to, but whatever, you forgot, you didn't know. You made all the animation in here. Let's say it starts here, press I to keyframe. Let me just uh, change to here, okay. Then on the frame 20, I bring it in here, set a keyframe. And then on frame 40, I have it down here. So this is what the object's doing. And you already did it in object mode, but you can't do that because it should be attached to a rig. You can just come here and like add an armature and bind it to the armature because like I said, you're going to have a hard time doing that. So for example, let's go into pose mode. Let's say, <laughs> let me know if it's too complicated or very technical because rigging can be very overwhelming. <laughs> If we animate it here, grab it in here. Oops. Grab it in Y. And now this is the animation. It starts at one. If you go into object mode and you grab it down here, it's not this one. See, uh, what's going to happen is you think the animation is happening in, in here, but in fact, it's going up there. And if you go back into pose mode and clear this animation like Alt G, see what happens. I mean, the object is misplaced, it missed the, the origin. So this is why you can't object and animation at the same time. And uh, I mean, like I was saying before, if you have this animation, the animation of this object, you forgot, I mean, there is a workaround for this. You would have to, I won't go into this because it can be uh, very technical, but you would have to bake uh, the position of this, add a bone, 
create a constraint, then copy the animation and paste it on the rig. So don't. You're going to have a, a really bad time if you do animations in object mode before you attach the rig. Don't do it. Just have the objects like remove everything like I don't want any animation in here. Just delete it. Have it at its origin. Add a rig and only then start animating it. Because otherwise it's not going to work. And like I said, one animation is going to override the other. Have a hard time, for example, if you want this animation to play, I mean, you want to import this animation clip into another file. This is something that I usually do. Sometimes mm, I pose this hand very well in animation A, and now I'm working on animation B. So I just want to import, uh, copy this movement. So I just import the animation clip into the file I'm working on. And uh, it should work as expected, unless you did this. Like, please don't, never, never animate in object mode because you're going to have a hard time cleaning your animation later, knowing what's really happening, knowing uh, what's the motion that you achieved. So, yeah, let me see if there's anything else about this rigging intro that I should talk about. We talked about adding bones. The pivot point. Yeah, the pivot point is the head of the bone, like I was saying. Uh, let's go back here. Pivot point is the head of the bone. It's where everything. Uh, let me just remove this animation. Oh, by the way, a nice way to know if an object has animation on it. If you have a cylinder in here and you grab this here. If you come here to the cylinder on the outliner, you see this little arrow in here. It indicates that there is animation in this object. And it, as you can see, it created an animation clip in here. So uh, you, what you can do is I would first clear all the transforms. And then I would come here, press uh, the right mouse button. And where is it? Clear animation data. So this way, you know if there's any animation on your object or not. It shouldn't have any animation. Please keep this in mind. It's very important. Don't, don't animate in object mode. Neither the prop nor the prop armature. Um, let's say bone hierarchy. I showed you how to add bones, change hierarchy. Uh, something uh, nice to, for example, I can delete this, this other cylinder here. Um, there is a way it should be in edit mode. I mean, whenever you're uh, adding bones or removing bones of your rig, it should always be in edit mode. So let's hide this. I don't like this cylinder. It's annoying. So let's hide it. Let's say, for example, uh, I extruded a bone here, but I don't want it to, to be connected. I don't want it to be a child of this bone, for example, or I don't want it to be connected. So what I do is I press Control P, no, I, Alt P. I'm sorry, in the e, uh, in Windows, and you can choose to clear parent or disconnect the bone. If I don't want this bone to be a child, I will just press clear parent. But in this case, I just want to disconnect the bone, and you can grab it anywhere, and this dotted line. We'll see. We'll show uh, which bone is the parent. You can move it anywhere, as you can see, and the dotted line is going to show uh, what uh, which bone is the parent of this one. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, though, it's just to, to keep things organized. I don't like doing this, like just adding bones and not changing the name. I always rename everything, starting from the amateur in here. So let's say. This is Blender. It added Armature.001. The naming convention should be uh, Armature underscore prop. And if you select every bone and you come here to the bone tab, you can change the name. So uh, to keep things organized, I usually rename the, the bone uh, based on the object that I'll be animating. So for example, uh, let me open here the wings emote. That's this one. 
So let's go to the armature prop in here. Let's hide the armature for the avatar. Let's go to this uh, pose mode. So as you can see, the name of the bones, I always rename everything. I usually use DEF for the uh, deformation bones, which are the bones that are going to deform the mesh, like we did the skinning. So this is Dev Wings main because it's the bone that is going to drive uh, the wings as a whole. Then there's wings.r.001 because these are the right side. And another thing, Blender has a naming convention for right and left. And if you don't use it properly, you can't mirror animations. So just that's just something uh, to keep in mind. Usually, I prefer having dot r or what else. But uh, keep the naming convention right for Blender. So this is how I do it. For example, feathers lower, uh, feathers upper. Uh, these are the right side. These are the left side. This is why this is how I usually rename bones. Let's just have another one. I'm going to show you another one in here. Um, just open the file. Let me open the proposal. Okay. This one has a little more complex rig because I had to add some constraints to it. But as you can see, the bones are always renamed. So this is the prop spring. Then there's the clown body, clown arm. And this is how you rename uh, your bones. I mean, th this is just a tip from me. You can do rename however you want, whatever makes more sense for you. But I usually add this DEF before. So when I open it in here, uh, not this one. Like for if I expand here, you see, uh, that can identify which are the deforming bones, right? In this case, there's only ones for the wing, but if we come here to the armature for the avatar and expand it in here, oh no, the avatar, I didn't, <laughs> didn't rename those because they were already there. But you can see that I added control for all the controls. So just to keep things organized, rename everything and rename them properly. So if you are starting from scratch, I mean, you open this file, but you mean you don't want to use this armature prop. You want to add yours and start everything so you can practice. Remember, add an armature and change the naming convention to prop, okay? Um, skinning, uh, we've been through that and there's constraints. Constraints uh, are a little, uh, complicated because uh, for example it's how you I mean it's how you constrain a bone so this is the constraint step you can go in here and see that there's all these options they only work in pose mode so if you want to do it do it in pose mode so for example if I want uh, let's just go into edit mode and I'm going to uh, add a new bone in here individual origins. Let's say I want uh, this smaller bone to control uh, with the other one. This is how we usually do for controls, if we had controls or anything. So you go into pose mode, select uh, this bone, for example, that you want to be controller. You select, I think, this one first, and then this one, and then go in here. And copy transforms. Oops, did it wrong. <laughs> it's the opposite. Select the big one first, the one that is going to control, then the other. Press Control Shift C, copy transforms. Now you see that if we move this bone around, it's moving everything. So there are many types of constraints that you can use for your emote animation. Usually, what I do is, for example, if I want something to follow the avatar's hands, 
um, like I did here, um, let's say for the, let's pick the law of grenade emote. Um, yeah, if I come here to pose mode, you see that the bone is green, and when a bone is green, it means that it has a constraint. So what I did is for the grenade to follow the hand of the avatar, I created a child of constraint. Because you can use these constraints even like the rigs are not connected. Uh, in the same object, but uh, through constraints, you can make a certain bone from an armature follow a, another certain bone from another armature. In this case, I chose child of, the target is the avatar armature, and the bone is avatar right hand. So uh, when this constraint is on, I mean, you can see when it's one, the constraint is working on. And when it's zero, it's not, it doesn't have an effect anymore. So while it is on one, the object will follow the avatar hand. So keep this in mind if you all, if you ever want to add like a weapon or something like that, or something that should follow a, a certain body part of the avatar, you can always create this constraint. It should be on pose mode. Then you come here to this tab. Add object constraint, select, for example, the child of, and if you want it to follow the avatar hips or the avatar hands or whatever, you just uh, fill the proper, proper settings, the proper uh, fields in here, like this one. Oops. Here. I'm sorry, it's not this tab, it's the bone with uh, a link on it. And you just select everything and you have a constraint. You can have this object following your avatar anywhere and you don't have to do it manually because manually it can be very tricky. Okay, so I think uh, we are ready to move forward. Please keep in mind the rig should only be animated in pose mode. And please keep in mind that object animation is not supported. So before you start any animation, just clear the transforms, add your armature, skin the, the the prop, and only then you do whatever you want to do uh, related to animation. Okay. Now uh, let's go to the animation. Working with two animation clips. So things that I've uh, put in here that are important to keep in mind, but I'll show you in Blender only animate anything in pose mode. I already talked about it. Where I'm going to show you how to create animation clips, setting the names right. We already set the names right for the armature, but uh, we are going to set uh, the name of the animation clips right too. Uh, then synchronizing two animation clips, adding a constraint like I've showed you uh, right now how to edit, but I can show you like uh, live how to do it. Turning constraints on and off because, for example, like in the hand grenade or, or the tennis ball, you don't want the object following all the time. And keep in mind that animation clips should have the same length. This is very important. Animations should have the same exact length. So um, let's go to this file. I think I can close. There are many Blender files and in here. I don't need this much. Just having the wings and the starting file. So this is the starting file. Let's say I want to add, uh, we are in object mode. Let's add uh, a UV sphere. It's too big. I don't like it. Let's make it smaller. Um, let's apply these transforms. Let's clear any animation data because this I scaled. I mean, if you do anything to your object, it's going to create this animation clip 
and have animation data. So let's just expand here, uh, right click, clear animation data. We're going to skin uh, this object to the prop. Um, let me hide an avatar I'm not sure in here because it's too much. We don't need all that formation right now. So to do that, uh, you select, uh, I think the child first parent later. I think that's it. Press uh, Control P. Yes. And uh, now I'm going to show you how to do skinning in a different way. We did it with automatic weights. Now we'll, we'll do it uh, with empty groups. So just so you know how to do it, OK? What happens in empty groups? Before, uh, like I showed you, with automatic weights, if you come here to pose mode and grab, you see that the bone would be moving the sphere. It's not the case in here. And why is that? Because if you come here, select the sphere and go into edit mode and come here to the data, you see that it created vertex groups. Uh, if you press here, select, you won't see anything because you haven't assigned any vertices to this group. So I prefer the vertices in here. So what are we going to do? Since we only have one bone, we're going to select everything. Select the vertex group and press assign. You see that everything that is selected belongs to this vertex group. Now if we go into pose mode, select this here, Go into pose mode and grab. You see that it's moving the object around. OK, so um, first, let's create an animation clip. We have the starting pose, but the starting pose is for the avatar. Uh, something that I want to talk about early before things get out of control. We have two armatures. We have, let's go into object mode so we don't mess around. We have the avatar armature and object the, the prop armature. So the start pose is related to the avatar. I mean, I can come here in pose mode and select starting pose, and nothing is going to happen because this animation uh, doesn't have any transform for this object. So that's why we need to uh, create animation clips that. Uh, I have proper naming convention. So I don't want this starting pose for this. I'll just press Shift and press the X in here. I'll press New. There is an action. I'll press the Shield to save a uh, fake user. And I'm going to rename this, for example, Ball. Because why? If I go, OK, we have ball prop. Let's set a keyframe in here. Let's press I. Everything is yellow. There is a keyframe in there. Keyframe in action editor, keyframe in graph, uh, graph editor. If we go back into object mode, for example, and I select this armature, it already has the starting pose. But I won't select the ball because the ball is for the prop. So we need to keep this in mind. Uh, only work with an animation. You can only edit the animation related to that armature. For example, go into pose mode. I'll change this name for. Uh, I usually keep the same name for if it's ball prop. I usually have ball avatar. I keep it consistent. Then select everything. Press I. And then let's say avatar lifts. The arm here rotates the hand. Oops. Like, what's wrong with the arm here? Okay. Okay. Let's say we have something like this. Oh no! I did it all. On the <laughs> frame one, bummer. But whatever, this is not gonna be a problem. And let's say here, I just, oh, whatever, I messed up already. Don't worry. So uh, let's say the next frame, like say frame 10, the avatar lowers the arm. 
and clears this rotation. I like it this way. So we have a keyframe. You can set a keyframe on everything. And this, uh, this is the clip for the avatar. So if we go here, object mode, press the prop. You, you have to keep doing this. Like when you are animating two different clips, you have to keep going through one and other. There is a way like to avoid this, but then it makes it harder to select certain ones. I mean, it, it was layers. And now I think it's different in here. Where is it? I oh, know I think it's in the avatar that here. There are many layers in here. So, uh, I mean, I haven't messed a lot with uh, Blender 4.0.2, but back then, if you have like everything like selectable, uh, the avatar and the prop, you wouldn't be able to. Uh, you wouldn't be able to select a certain layer without the other. So it would be a mess. So I won't suggest that because the, the chances of doing something stupid, it's a lot higher. So uh, where was I? Okay, object mode or prop. So let's say go into pose mode. I want the ball to follow the avatar hand. What I'm going to do is I come here, Select this uh, bone constraints tab. Add bone constraint, child off. Then I'm going to select armature because it's the avatar armature. And the bone, uh, I want the left hand. Um, here it is. And it's following the hand now. So whatever the hand does, uh, the ball is going to follow. Let's say in frame 10, we set a keyframe and let's say our oh, frame 11, I don't want this, uh, this influence anymore. So something important to keep in mind, you, you can set keyframes in here. That's something like if you want to turn on and off the constraints, you can set keyframes. Just have the uh, cursor over here and press I to set a keyframe. You should have a keyframe on the first one too. And let's say on frame 11, I want this to be zero, but see what happens if you press zero, it's going to go back to uh, its original position. And that's not ideal if you want to keep the ball there, like to, to continue the movement. So what do we do? We don't do, uh, we don't turn, we don't drag here and drop to zero. We press this X. And now you see that there, there aren't any keyframes in here. You press I to set a keyframe, press I in here to set a keyframe. And now, so for example, let's have it just in here, frame 11 and frame 16, it's down here. So this is what it looks like. Pretty cool. Uh, you don't have to do it manually because if you, I mean, just having one object following the other without any connection between them, it's nightmare and it's hell. So constraints uh, make it easy for a bone to follow another bone, even if it's in a different armature. It doesn't have like necessary, you don't have to use constraints to connect to different armatures like I showed you before. If you want to add controls or uh, for IK, for example, for IK, they have to be in the same armature, but this child of you can connect objects that are not in the same armature, but they are working together as if they were. Okay, so this is how you work with two animation clips. In mind that you have to select the proper animation clip. I mean, feel free to choose a ball avatar and you can't edit it or you're going to mess up because you're going to add keyframes in here and then there's animation there too. So don't. Only animate with the proper animation clip and only animate the avatar in the right animation clip for the avatar. Okay. 
Something that I like doing, for example, uh, I'm going to show you the wings emote in here because these are still here. But um, you can see these many dotted lines in here. And that is because, um, let's select it here. Oops. It's because I set a marker on every frame that I thought that the avatar did something that I wanted to animate. So sometimes, I mean, you are animating the avatar. For example, for this wings emote, I did the whole uh, avatar animation before, and then I added the wings. And for the wings to, to be synchronized with the movements of the avatar, there aren't uh, any constraints except for this one that is following uh, the avatar spine. So the whole set of wings follow the avatar. But other than that, I mean, if I want the avatar is going up, what should the wing be doing going down? Okay, so what do I do? I go to the avatar armature in here. Let's select go into pose mode. Select the Mecha Wings avatar. Showing in here because it's easier. Blend uh, the graph editor can be very overwhelming. So I just come here, for example, let's say I want to put a marker in here, go into the, the action editor or whatever, and press M, and you add this uh, dotted line, this marker. It's showing which frame is it. It's in frame 90. So uh, this helps me a lot, like, okay, the, the avatar is turning to the side on this specific frame. I set a marker in here, so I don't have to keep going back and forth uh, through the clips. So I go through all of this animation clip, set a marker on every frame that I think something important is happening. So here, avatar going up, avatar going down, avatar going up, avatar going down. Avatar is preparing to go back, reach the highest point. Things should change, then boom. And I keep adding those so I don't have to keep changing, like going avatar, then in the same frame, editing the wing and all that. So to delete this is very simple. Just select, for example, select this one, for example, frame 99, and press delete on your keyboard if you want to delete. These markers. I think this is super helpful uh, because, like I said, uh, it helps you synchronize. You, it helps you set a marker on every every frame that something important is happening, and you just sync the two situations. So, for example, uh, in here, in our example, if the ball hits the ground in frame like seventeen. Now I want it to go back. We could even like do a, a little squash in here. But it's rotated, so it, it should be a little annoying. But let's say it should go back up. And by the way, uh, even with the constraint, even if the bone is following another one, you can still animate it, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's not like you, it just, you can position it in the best way uh, to fit the animation or the avatar. So let's make this ball small. Let's grab it and place it here. And it looks uh, much better. And I mean, we said uh, we changed the scale and everything. So if you just want to keep the scale of this bone, just expand here. Let's say uh, this and this uh, is the location and the scale. You just copy and paste it uh, on the other frames to keep the exact same uh, scaling and position. Yeah, it's still possible to add anything when there's uh, when there's a constraint. 
So what else? Uh, synchronizing animation clips, adding a constraint. I showed you how to do it, how to turn it off, on and off. Ah, and to, to change it back on, uh, for example, you want it to be, let's undo everything because it's gonna, the transforms are going to make it harder to show you. Okay. You want, okay, now the, the ball is up here again. And I want on the next frame for it to be following uh, the avatar's hand again. So I set a keyframe in the influence. Go to the next frame. Oh, it's not showing. I'm talking about, are you guys seeing my blender screen or, or no? Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, don't worry for a minute. <laughs> so I'm talking about and showing everything on Blender. So yeah, just set a keyframe here and influence, uh, and set it to. Oops, not one. I think it's the same. You have to copy the same position. Let's see if it works. Yeah, kinda. So it the turning it on and off. It's just oh, oh no, for, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. Uh, if you want to add a constraint, I mean, you can add a constraint in here instead of having it on one. Let me just delete this. Um, you can uh, change it to one and set inverse. Yes, and it works. Okay, so if you want uh, it to keep the position, for example, you added the constraint, let's say, in frame one. Oh, then it messed up the others because I didn't set the inverse before. But let's say here, let's just delete everything here. So for example, you created a child of constraint. Armature on um, what that was the left hand. Okay, yeah, something that I it was a mistake because I want to explain something. Usually, when you do this, I mean this is the starting position. So what I even though I mean it, it gets teleported to this proper position. Usually, I press this button set inverse and the object uh, keeps its original position and only then I grab it and place it wherever I want. Uh, let's say the scale is this one. Let me see, the ball looks uh, well placed in the hand. And now it's going to follow the avatar hand. I'm, I don't remember, I think it was frame and frame 11. Uh, don't forget to set a keyframe here frame 10 and frame 1. Let's say frame 11, I don't want the constraint anymore. Press the X. Set a keyframe on everything. Yeah, now it doesn't, doesn't follow the hand anymore. You can animate it going down here. Going way to the floor. Going way back up. And now if I set inverse, yes, now it's going to work. See, oops, now it does. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. It's because I didn't set a keyframe before. But yeah, it can be a little tricky getting the constraints right. But uh, this is a uh, bit like to turn it off and back uh, on in the hand. You can just, like I said, you can try by just copying and pasting it in here. Oh, where is it? Yeah, keyframe, keyframe. Yeah, now it should, yes. So keyframe on one, keyframe at zero. 
Sure. And now it's going to follow uh, the arm of the avatar again if we change back to object mode and pose mode and say like I'm 20, I'm 21. Oops. And it's working, right? So uh, this is how constraints work. Um, turning constraints on and off. Animation clips should have the same length. Let's go to the my one of my favorite emotes ever, uh, wings one. So if we go in here, uh, select the uh, avatar rig, select the avatar animation, and if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, two. 99 frames right so the wings should also be uh, 299 frames let's see if it's working fine if they are synchronized let me just select the prop select pose mode and then select all the bones and there it is just remember, uh, set a keyframe on the first and on the last frame of your animation. They should be the same length. Sometimes when copying and pasting frames, uh, it happens that uh, sometimes you just have a single keyframe lost in here. But I'm going to show you how to identify that because the next, the next step, I think, is um, exporting. So here I'm saying that always select the proper pair of armature and animation clip. And I'm show, I'm going to show you all, uh, while exporting why that's important or else you won't be able to export your animations. So uh, the things to make sure before exporting is only having two animation clips. So if you did like, um, I like can hear uh, Let's say we have this many, I duplicated this for no reason because I wanted to edit and not miss my work and all that. So if I have many of animation clips, many of these animation clips, just delete them all. Save your file. Delete everything that you don't need. Save your file and reopen it. Let's say save. Um, and now if I reopen. You see, uh, why there's the prop? Ah, because I, I added, uh, I'm just checking here, the uh, nonlinear. Okay, and there was one that was locked in here. So it should work now. If I just save, open recent. Now, uh, come on, <laughs> there is this amateur prop, annoying. Stop go away. Okay. Um, yeah, let's save. Okay, now it works. And yeah, we have the avatar and we have the prop. So only two, only two animation clips. Yeah, I mean, I have three, I have one object transform. Please delete that. We don't need uh, more than two animation clips. Actually, we can't have more than two animation clips. Next thing, uh, I've showed you this before on the emote workshop, how to push uh, animations down to the NLA track. Here, we're going to do the same thing, but uh, it's important. This, I'm gonna show you why it's important to keep the avatar and, uh, and the prop animation separated. I think I'll just delete this. Many things on my screen right now. Delete this, please. No, okay. So just ignore these dotted lines. Uh, here it's already done properly, but I'm going to delete it and show you uh, how to do it, pushing things into NLA tricks. So let's say you have a setup pretty much like mine. I usually work with the graph editor in here and uh, the action editor down here and the timeline. So. We have an armature prop selected. Select everything. Make sure you have the proper animation. 
selected in here. I'm going to show you how it looks like a nonlinear uh, animation. You can see armature prop. This is the armature that we have selected. This is the proper animation clip. Push down. Okay, make sure it's the prop animation, the prop armature. Okay, now we have to do the same thing for the avatar. What I've seen people doing, and I've done myself sometimes before getting it right, is just, oh, okay, now we have to push down the avatar animation. Select and push down. But look what is happening in here. Armature doesn't have any clips under it. Armature prop has two. What does this mean? It means that uh, the armature prop has two animation clips attached to it. And the avatar has none. So if you import this file in the builder, the avatar won't be doing anything because it doesn't have any animation clips attached to this armature. So uh, it's usually it, it, this is an easy mistake to do because I mean you already have an armature selected. Just select the animation clip in here and push down. Please don't do that. Pay attention to what you're doing. So we are using armature prop. No need for uh, avatar animation clip. Just delete this one. Okay, now how do I push down the avatar animation? Go back into object mode, select the avatar armature. You can go into pose mode or not, but that's up to you. I prefer going to pose mode. Avatar animation clip. Avatar armature. Push down. Your NLA track should look like this. If it looks like this, one clip for the prop, one clip for the avatar, you're doing it great. So let's say we want to export it. Everything is ready. Remember, uh, some people prefer like selected objects only when exporting. I prefer hiding the avatar shape because I already created a, a collection for shape A, which is the female and shape B for the male. So I just hide the mesh that I don't want to be exported. So export CLB. Uh, let's say just, yeah, like a wings final fix GLB. So I want to include uh, visible objects. Some people prefer selected objects. They just select the objects that they want to export. I prefer visible objects because it's easier, but that's really up to you. As long as you don't, please don't export the avatar mesh with the emote. Or you're going to have a weird case happening when you upload it to the builder, or even in a world you have like a ghost standing up there doing nothing while uh, there's the avatar mesh. I mean, your avatar will be there doing nothing, and there's going to come this ghost of this <laughs> avatar doing the emotes that your avatar was supposed to do. So don't export the mesh. Then in transforms, uh, remember that this, this is Blender uh, 3.5. I'm going to show you how to do it on Blender 4.02, okay? Um, Blender 3.5, animation, under animation, I think it's under animation, or skinning, they change this all the time. Please check export deformation bones only because we have many, many controls uh, for the avatar armature. They are not uh, deforming bones, but uh, if you export them, I mean, you're going to have a duplicate armature. You don't want that a, a duplicated a number of bones. So your fire is going to be heavier for no reason. So please export. Uh, deformation bones only and boom you export and it should be fine here if you're not exporting the mesh and you're not exporting uh, non-deforming bones your file size should be okay to go right so uh, let's come here for the example that we were creating let's say uh, pose mode let me just go back to ref editor select the avatar here I want it to be 40 frames. Let's just copy. Oops. Paste it in here. 
40 frames for uh, the avatar animation. Now we go back to the ball. There is it? A very tiny bone in here. Pose mode, select the prop animation. I deleted, did I delete the frames? What happened to it? Yeah, it seems somehow I deleted, but that's just set a keyframe in here, uh, doing something uh, like this, and then I just copying and pasting. I deleted the wrong, <laughs> the wrong animation. I'm sorry. And shift D, 40. Okay. We have 40. Let's say uh, we duplicated this and I didn't see that I ended up duplicating this. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Duplicating this. And there's this keyframe in there that I didn't see because my timeline only shows until 40. So I'm going to show you how it looks like and you'll be able to identify if your animations don't have the same size. So push down. So select here the nonlinear, select the avatar, ball avatar, push down. Oops. Going to pose mode. So you can see that this clip is much longer than the other one. This means that you have, even if it's just a single keyframe, it doesn't have that you have all these this frames, uh, keyframes on all these extra frames, but they are not in the same length. So just delete this, delete everything, uh, select the avatar armature, select the avatar animation, push down. Then go back into the prop, select the animation. And remember, oh, of course, it's 80 frames, so there must be something wrong up here. Just come here, select the frame, delete it, and push down. Animations are the same length. Now, only two animation clips. Naming convention is right for both. So just hide the mesh, okay? Um, export GLB. Uh, let's say uh, many things in here. Let's say emotes. Uh, let's save here with Quadraji, right? <laughs> Why not? Include visible objects. And now in Blender 4.0 uh, onwards, I think the deform bones are somewhere. I think it's under data. Animation, perhaps, no, skinny. Where is it? I thought it was animation. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, no. Um, where is it? I think it's somewhere in here, but I can't find it. Animation. No, it's not animation. I think it's under data. Um, armature, perhaps? Yes. Got it. I always changing this. I'm sorry. So, under data, under armature, export deformation bones and export. And that's it. You did your whole emote 2.0. You learned rigging. You added an armature, created an armature for your object. You skinned the mesh to the armature. You created animation clips, deleted animation clips, added constraints and all that. Let me see what else is missing. Um, yeah, make sure to push down the proper animation, right? Because like I said, if you, for example, have the um, avatar armature selected, and just select the prop animation and push down. Avatar armature is going to have two animation clips. Armature prop is going to have none. And when you upload it to the builder, it's not going to work. Avatar will be playing animation on the right. Prop will be uh, idle. Okay. So um, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. 
I hope I covered everything. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry if it was too technical, the rigging part, but uh, I mean, it's inevitable. If you were going to work with animation, you better learn, learn at least the basics. Um, there is always this um, tools for creating automatic rigs. And I think that's very cool for people who don't know how to rig. But still, I mean, if you're going to use a rig, you gotta know, you gotta have a notion of uh, how it works, how it's set up, because sometimes you might need to uh, customize your own rig or understand how it works. So if you wanna become an animator, I highly suggest uh, learning rigging. Of course, there is a, a, a whole <laughs> role only for rigger, and they can be much more experienced than I am with rigging. I mean, they have all these crazy setups and all that. But still, if you're an animator, learn how to rig. I, I, th I know it can be annoying and boring and frustrating because it's technical. It's not visually nice and entertaining as animation or modeling. But still, it's important. Uh, today, I mean, I... I've studied about rigging, rigging for games and all that, how to add everything. So these days I much more prefer uh, doing my own rigs, uh, animating my own rigs and uh, getting a rig for from someone else and having to do the animation because I know the setup that I did. I know all the possibilities of the rig. So I encourage you to learn at least a little bit if you want to uh, dive deeper in emote creation and animation. Right, so feel free to ask questions if you have any, and I'll try my best to answer them. No, love that. I totally agree. I mean, I'm still <clears throat> sorry, my cough learning more about rigging, but if you learn it from the bottom up, like you're showing us, then you understand how to troubleshoot. Because if you get somebody else's rig, you have no idea what's going on, right? It makes it a lot more difficult to, to make any adjustments. Um, but I think we have some questions. I don't see any yeah, but if anybody here, yeah, I think she was saying has any questions, please feel free to let me if see you my wanna share anything, say anything. I mean feel free to, now it's our time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you though so much for this awesome, really excellent in depth presentation. So many great tips. I'm glad it's recorded for my own personal self as well. I wanna go back over it mm -hmm. and look at and yeah, no. It's a lot of information. I mean, it, it can be overwhelming, but with time and if you try doing it on your own, like following the steps and with time you get used to it and I mean, it will be all ingrained in your brain, but it can be overwhelming, all this information and it would be like, oh, I don't think I can remember all that. <laughs> oh, <really> with time. <laughs> I love watching yeah, things it gets like slow speed you know i put the recording uh -huh. at like super slow and then follow along with blender i wanted to have blender open but i'm like it would probably crash everything and since i'm recording but yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm curious are you working on any new emotes right now um i'm working on emotes for the wellness week Ooh, and a okay. couple emotes maybe awesome. i should keep it a secret <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's going to be awesome but these right. are, there are two emotes that I'm working for wellness. Well, we'll have to right have now. you back to share about that because it's really cool just to see yeah. your, your Blender file and um, get behind the scenes of that. I love looking at that. Um, let me see. Yeah. So anybody else? I mean, you're welcome to come on stage if anybody has any questions. And if not, um, we can start wrapping it up. But thanks again, Isa, for taking the time and doing this great presentation. And also wanted to give everybody a heads up. We do have another one scheduled for next week, and it's going to be with Polygonal Minds talking about their 100 Avatar uh, garden project. So yeah, it should be a fun one, Issa. I don't know if you have time to join us for that, too. It should be cool to see what how they yeah, did. I'll try to. I'll try to. <laughs> but keep us posted for sure. I would love to see. Um, uh, obviously, I'll be seeing your, your, your emotes yeah. when they come out. <laughs> Yeah. I'll try to save some uh, time-lapse videos, record some time-lapse videos, because what I usually do is, I, okay, I'm usually animating stuff, okay, this looks great, and I'm like, oh, damn, I didn't record anything, I don't have yeah. any <laughs> background <laughs> to show, I mean, 
So I remember to do it a little bit with the wings emote, but maybe I'll do uh for one one emote is ready for wellness, but the other one, uh, it's an emote two point because it has a prop. So mm. maybe I'll remember to record it and show with you guys the process of from zero this time. <laughs> oh, would love that. I know. I just I love watching any works in progress and or just fast forward or through mm. that. But very cool. Mm. Well, yeah. Thank you and. Um, yeah, I'm excited for well this week. There's so much great stuff coming up, and the Art Week submission time is open right now as well for everybody. Um, if you haven't heard about that for Mesh and Art Week, are you are you doing stuff for that and on the side other than emotes? For Art Week, yeah. No, that we I'm working on some animation for uh, some projects for the foundation. Uh, some some of the shape up stuff that we've been working uh, for the foundation. So. Uh, it's emotes and uh, other animations too, but yeah. Very cool. Can't wait to see those too. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah, thank you. And I guess with that, we'll, we'll call it a wrap. Um, yeah, feel free at any time you want to share, uh, reach out to me. You can always, I would love to have you back. And anybody in the community, if you have any questions, I'll be um, hopefully editing. And if my internet works, have it up either later today or in the morning, this recording for those of you who had issues viewing the screen. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I hope this was helpful for everyone. If you guys ever need help with emotes, get stuck with anything or have any questions, uh, just reach out to me. I'm always happy to help uh, the best way I can. And maybe even I learn something new sometimes, uh, like trying in trying to help you guys, I always learn something new. So yeah, I'm always open for questions and and if you need help, just reach out. All right. Awesome. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Lots of love in the chat for you on there. <laughs> Lots of fan people here. Yeah. Fan girls, fan oh, you guys are lolly. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> thank you. Thank really? you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And thank you for all the love. And I think you guys are, are the best. I mean, I wouldn't be emotes workshops if not for you guys so thank you so much for all the love and the support and yeah awesome okay well thanks everyone and until next time be sure to join us monday with polygon minds have a great weekend um uh, it's a little early but still <laughs> have a great thursday rest of your thursday bye everyone bye isa thank you